Autumn is the time for spooky horror games and tense thrillers. For most people. Since I am not a fan of horror or thriller games, I've got to find other ways to get into the season spirit. What about killing games? Sounds good to me. That's not really the reason why I chose now to play my second Danganronpa game. It was more because the gap between Tales of Arise and Shin Megami Tensei 5 was large enough and a Steam sale for the games came at the perfect time. Either way though, I was happy to dive back into a game of twists and turns, stylized presentation, arguing, and mystery solving. After playing through Danganronpa 2, I can conclude that if you enjoyed the first Danganronpa game, Danganronpa 2 Goodbye Despair is a worthy sequel that you should give a try. Danganronpa 2 Goodbye Despair is the direct sequel to Danganronpa Trigger Happy Havoc. Don't worry, this video is spoiler free for the first game, but the game itself is not, so if you want to get into the series, the second game is not the place to start. Danganronpa is a visual novel killing adventure game developed by Spike Chunsoft and depending on platform and location published by either Spike Chunsoft or NIS America. The second game originally came out for the PSP in 2012, then arrived on the Vita in 2013 with a western version coming in 2014. Since those initial releases, the game has also had a port to BC, a combined release with either the first game or all three games to the PS4, an enhanced release for iOS and Android that will also be coming to Switch as a combined release and sold individually as well. Pretty much, if you play games, you can find a platform to play any of the Danganronpa games on, and usually in a nicely priced bundle as well. The game performed well enough critically, I don't think I've ever seen a game more consistently rated 8 out of 10, and commercially sold quite well too with a recent report celebrating the series as a whole passing 5 million copies sold, and Danganronpa 1 and 2 passing a million sales each. No wonder they're talking about making more games despite what was originally stated. How did Spike Chunsoft follow up the first game with this new adventure? For this second game, there is a new main character and new setting. You play as Hajime Hinata, a student from Hope's Peak Academy who has forgotten their ultimate power. Hajime, along with 15 other students, have been brought to a tropical island by a rabbit-like creature named Usami. While suspicious of Usami and the insistence that they cannot leave the island, Hajime gradually begins to warm to the idea, finally jumping in just as the storm clouds arrive, along with the bear, Monokuma. Monokuma takes over control of the island from Usami, who he then gives the name Monami instead, and announces new rules. The beach vacation has now turned into the Killing Island Life, where once a murder has been committed, which Monokuma ensures will happen by providing motives, a class trial commences to determine who was responsible. If they choose the murderer, also known as the Blackened, only the murderer gets punished. If they choose wrong, though, everyone besides the Blackened is punished, and the murderer goes free. It may be a new island setting, but Monokuma is up to his old tricks. The questions then are, who will survive and who will die? What happened to the people on the islands, and what's happening outside of the islands? Play to find out the answers to all those questions. Danganronpa 2 decided to, with both its story and characters, play on players' expectations from the first game. As expected, this includes some referential humor, mainly from Monokuma, but it also allowed Danganronpa 2 to explore some new character dynamics by having characters react differently to the class trials, and specifically the ideas of hope and despair. The characters were pretty well written in my opinion, with several standout characters, and only a couple that I thought were complete missteps. As with the first game, seeing these standard Japanese high school character tropes go through this insane scenario offered a chance to see new depths for each of them. If you enjoyed the writing of the first game, you will very likely enjoy the writing of the second as well, even if there may be strong disagreements in the fandom over certain characters. Considering for this game you are on a series of islands, there's quite a few places to go visit and explore, from shopping malls to amusement parks that open gradually as you progress through the chapters of the game. You travel between these different areas either via fast travel options or simply walking, walking giving you additional experience to level up so you can equip more skills for the class trials. During a standard day without any killing, you will usually have a conversation at the beginning of the day to catch the plot up and then have free time to spend with your fellow island residents. These events give insight into each character's personality and you can give them gifts to further improve your relationships with them. 
Gifts are generally won from the Monokuma Gacha machine, or whatever it is called, using Monokuma coins which you earn from finding hidden Monokuma figures and class trials. The character hangouts have the added bonuses of unlocking skills and getting hope fragments. The hope fragments can then be used to purchase the unlocked skills which can be very helpful for the class trials. Before the class trial can begin though, once a dead body is discovered, the game switches to investigation mode where you go around collecting clues and statements in the form of truth bullets. Then once all the clues are complete, you shall proceed to the tasteless Monokuma Rock to begin the class trial. During the class trial, you will be asked to participate in several games, some returning from the previous game but with adjustments, and some completely new. The most frequent activity, though, are the non-stop debates where you can use your truth bullets to point out flaws in other characters' arguments. You can also back up a character's statement in certain instances of non-stop debates. Other modes from the previous game, like the Hangman's Gambit, Bullet Time Battle, now called Panic Time Action, and Closing Arguments have also been altered, but the core elements are still there. Then you have the new modes, such as Rebuttal Showdowns, where you cut through an opposing character's arguments with your Truth Blade, Logic Dive, which is like a snowboarding or skateboarding minigame while piecing together information about the murder, and finally Spot Select, which is very simple. Just pick out the spot of interest. If you mess up or get something wrong, you'll lose health and if you lose your full health bar, you will have to restart the section you lost on. Once I adjusted to the new system though, failure was rare if ever, especially with the focus ability slowing things down when I chose to make things easier. The class trials are the most intensive part of the gameplay by far, and with the new and adjusted modes will challenge you in ways the previous game did not. They are also longer than the previous game's trials were, with a trial recess happening about the midway point of each trial to give you a bit of a break. If you're like me and want to get the trial done in one sitting, it is still possible so long as you set aside a good amount of time to completing it, but the recess is a natural stopping point for those who want a break, although you can of course save and leave at any point in the trial if you so wish. The trials in Danganronpa 2 are quite good in my opinion, some better than others, but the only two that really annoyed me are ones with obtuse solutions to a particular game. The frustration is occasional, but the satisfaction of completing the trial or figuring out the answer before the characters do is enough to wipe away the occasional annoyance. What really stood out to me with the trials though was that they were more complex this time around, both gameplay-wise and story-wise, and the impact felt from each trial was significant and sometimes echoed through the rest of the game. The first game had one or two trials of that nature, but the sequel managed that impact with all of the trials, and that's a credit to the writing team. Danganronpa 2 also expanded on the side content relative to the first game. While walking around leveling up your character very, very slowly, you are also in charge of taking care of a pet. Basically, your own in-game Tamagotchi that gives rewards if slash when you manage to bring it to maturity without killing it. That's not a big piece of the side content, the bigger stuff is with a couple outside modes. First, you have Magical Girl Miracle Monami, where Monami fights waves of monsters by either jumping on them or running circles around them. I didn't find this mode particularly appealing, but it certainly is a break from the usual game, so eh? The second mode, then, is Island Life, unlocked after completing the game, where you can spend your time completing tasks for Usami and hanging out with the various characters without the killing aspect. Much like the previous game's school life, it's mostly about getting more time with the characters and the structure of management and building is basically the same. Danganronpa isn't particularly known for its side content, but there is stuff to do if you want to spend more time with the characters in Island Life, and some other options if you want to try out something completely different or try and keep something alive during the main game, even if it's just a Tamagotchi. Presentation-wise, Danganronpa 2 has the new setting and new characters to work with to vary up the art, but the art style has not changed. The game still has a pop-up storybook feel to the scenes, at least a storybook with killing and demonic bears. I'm sure Paddington had some stories like that, right? The character designs are pretty memorable, aided by the wild and varied facial expressions that accompany them through the main story and especially the class trials. The characters and their expressions, plus the pink blood, are perhaps the most defining visual features of the Danganronpa games, so if you enjoy them usually, you'll have no problems here as well. Musically, I think the soundtrack was a step up from the first game. The island setting allowed the composers the chance to integrate typical island-related music and sounds into the bouncy but sinister style of the series. 
The soundtrack really worked for me, and I think they also chose wisely which songs from the original game would return. The voice acting casting was once again a great highlight. The script does frequently set some unique challenges to the actors, and most of them rose to the occasion. The main game is only partially voiced, but the class trials, where obviously the emotions are heightened, are fully voiced, and that's where the acting really shines. The UI maintains its clarity and rarely feels overwhelming, apart from certain Hangman's gambits, which I'm pretty sure are purposely that way. All in all, another solid effort in every area on the presentation front. I'll sum up what I think most of this video has said repeatedly. Danganronpa 2 is Danganronpa, but more with a different cast and setting. If you enjoyed the first game, there is no reason I can think of that you would not also enjoy this game. The developers did a decent amount to change up the gameplay in Class Trials and play on the expectations of players in the Class Trials and Mysteries of the Islands. The game also directly connects to the first game and in my opinion is a worthy successor that surpasses the first game in several areas. If you haven't given Danganronpa 2 a chance yet and enjoyed Danganronpa 1, you should definitely go for it. Before you go though, my channel is only saved from the Monokumian YouTube algorithm by those engagement driving likes, comments, and shares. Comments are especially appreciated because I enjoy talking to all of you in the comments and getting feedback on the video. If you are new here or just haven't done so yet, please hit the subscribe button to keep up with the channel. I hope to see you all in the next video, have a great day, and happy gaming. Oh, yeah.